Welcome to Step 9, Be Prepared for Pests and Problems, in the 10 Steps to a Successful Vegetable Garden. Learn about the insects and diseases that commonly occur in the area and learn control methods. Whenever possible, select disease-resistant varieties. The environment has a big effect on plants, on plant health and growth and development. Biotic environment and the abiotic environment. The biotic environment are the living factors in a plant's environment. So things like parasites, disease organisms, predators that feed on them, plant animal fungi pests that can affect the plant, and also beneficial things like nitrogen fixing bacteria or you know things that actually can benefit the plant. Where the abiotic environment is the non-living or environmental factors. So things to consider are soil conditions like the soil pH, salinity, the amount of water in the soil the humidity, wind speeds, temperatures. Commonly when a plant has a problem, it's usually an abiotic disorder because we do live in a very harsh climate for plants. It's very hot, it's very dry, there's bright sunlight, plants not well adapted to the hot, dry conditions of the desert, or we're not managing the environment properly. And you learn to develop coping mechanisms. Mother Nature has a way of eventually evening things out. Crop injury from salt can appear if proper management has not been followed. High temperature and shallow watering often cause problems, especially when plantings are made too late in the spring or too early in the fall. As temperatures increase, more pest problems will occur. There has to be a certain population of aphids to induce a ladybug to lay eggs. So when you get to a tipping point and there are suddenly too many aphids, it feels like that's about when the ladybugs show up and the little mantises come in because there is something to eat and something for the offspring to eat. They can keep on with a balance. In the meantime, we can hose the aphids off. You have to learn about the life cycle of the insect and identify the insect prior to using the pesticide so that you can effectively interrupt the life cycle. It is always important to fully identify the pest and before you use a pesticide, you need to be aware of when in the life cycle of the pest, this pesticide or herbicide will be most effective. So there's a number of factors to consider when you use pesticides. You want to inspect your plants for like dead or dying fruits because this is only going to invite pests. This is the kind of stuff you want to get out, get in your compost pile or throw away pretty quickly. You have to be always on the watch for the critters and then you have to determine what you're going to do to solve the problem or at least rescue part of your crop. How drastic action you're going to take if you don't just come in with an all-purpose pesticide and because you might not be able to eat the produce either. If you have got a pest problem that you feel you really need to control with pesticides, you might want to look around and make sure that you have met the horticultural needs of the plants, that you've got the kind of soil, and the nature of irrigation that would please it and make it healthy, that you haven't crowded it, and that it isn't just the season for that particular insect. We can use fairly mild-mannered controls such as soap sprays. They're not terribly toxic, but they are often effective in small areas. For more information, visit the University of Arizona's Cooperative Extension website.